Welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Power podcast. I am your host, Julia Renee. I'm Gabrielle Fortune. And I'm Kendall Grayboff. Ooh, Grayboff. I like change how I say it every single time. I know. Grayboff, Grayboff. It's Grayboff. (laughs) Grayboff. It's the Russian in her. It is the Russian in me. Guys, today we have a incredible episode as if they're not all going to be incredible (laughs) we are going to be talking about how to get started in the gym and not only how to get started but how to keep the momentum going in the gym because i don't know about you guys but getting started was hard enough but keeping up with the momentum that you have with the growth with the motivation with the mindset behind it that's where it really gets challenging and we're going to go through how we did that step by step and our own personal experiences through it and how it looks like for each of us because we're we do the same thing but we're also individuals and we have different goals so we're going to go over all of that with you so first of all step number one on how to get started in the gym what do you want cue the notebook what do you want what do you want as you can see i'm holding my microphone if you're watching on youtube way further away than the rest of the girls because Ian, our videographer and our editor, was like, you talk way too loud and you're way louder than the other girls. So I'm going to hold it way down here so you guys don't have some... I like or maybe we should just... Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have to be this close because I don't know how to talk. Kendall. Very soft-spoken. Yes. She has the ASMR voice like, my name is Kendall Graham. Oh god, I hate ASMR. Clickety. I'm going to like throw up watching this back. Stop! Stop. I have been obsessed with, side note, the ASMR <laughs> cleaning TikTok. I do watch those. Literally, I, will say, yeah. I don't watch anything else, but they're like opening things. Yes. Yes. I already told you guys how I feel about the head scratching. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. The head scratching ASMRs. Those are the best ones. That was very weird to find out about you. Very disturbing. I don't have anybody to scratch my head, so I have to watch somebody else. Oh, Gabby, stop it. I got the nails. Gabby too. displayed to us what she did during her pregnancy, which she would. She would play. Did my mic just turn off? Oh, there you go. Hello. Am I good? Um, we should figure this out. Pause. Yeah. Ian, we're pausing. Let me see. This seems. Oh. Is, it, is that I one? just un- unplugged it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And resume. So what I was saying is um, Gabby showed us an example of what she would do when she was pregnant, which was play ASMR head scratches and then lay there and like scratch her own head. I, it was <laughs> like a, pretend it was an ex- someone else was doing it. It was an experience. Honestly, though, it's like when you're a bodybuilder, you kind of get to a point where you'll watch and not is it as so mukbangs and stuff it's the I'm same thing because then you're pretending like ooh, i'm eating that but you're really not <laughs> there'll be times where like i can do that and then there's times where it literally infuriates me and i can't do that so you know it's just i like need to do it i can't listen time. to people like chew though i'm very selective with my mukbangers i can't yeah if that's my a, biggest pet peeve if you're a weird chewer a weird chewer <laughs> hard pass hard pass <laughs> Anyways, side note. Um, back we to make step the whole one. Pot about ASMR. Yeah, and like weird things about us, <laughs> things that we There's like. Too many. The episode would be too long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Gabby. Gabby's head scratches. <laughs> Julia's cleaning TikTok. Okay, step number one. What do you want? So basically, what this means is like, what is your goal? What is your intention behind starting what you do? Because a lot of times we start what we want to do without knowing the reason behind it. For example, a lot of people go into bodybuilding with only the why of I want to be shredded, I want to look good, but that can only get you so far. So Mm -hmm. what is the purpose behind you doing what you want to do and what your goal is? So if you would like to elaborate on that, either one of you. I was going to explain what you want doesn't always have to be mental too. It's like physically, what do you want to look like Mm -hmm. or how strong do you want to be? Because that Mm -hmm. could be the difference between choosing bodybuilding or powerlifting, you know, or neither if that's your physique goal. So I love that mental and physical. That's good because you have to really think about, okay, how do I want to either look or how do I want to feel? And that's kind of how mm-hmm. Kendra was saying the strength mm-hmm. aspect of it, because even though bodybuilding does require a lot of strength at a certain point, it's a lot of just aesthetics and you're mm-hmm. just kind of building to a specific aesthetic that the judges want you to see. So if strength is something that's super important to you, you might end up losing that passion behind it mm-hmm. doing bodybuilding. Cause a lot of the times your strength will go away because you're just so depleted. Yeah, so absolutely. Yes. And you also, have, you also have, to remember you have to really dial down on what you want 
Mm. Not what anybody else wants. Period. Not what social media wants, not what your significant other wants, what you want as far as goals, physique, mental health. That's solely, you have to sit down with yourself and ask yourself, okay, truly, what's going to make me happy? Is bodybuilding going to make me happy? Is powerlifting going to make me happy? Is running going to make me happy? Mm. Is going to the gym in general going to make me happy? And if you can't, like, truthfully answer any of those questions, like, you have to reevaluate your goals and what you want in your future, for your future. And a lot of this, honestly, might take a little bit of trial and error. Because for me, I thought I knew what I wanted when I started working out. And I've been basically weightlifting my entire life i started weightlifting at 15 but wasn't doing it with the intention uh, that i have now so i was doing it without the intention which is what's important about our step number one what's the intention behind doing what you're doing but it changes and it grows so i thought that i wanted to be like super skinny and thin and have a thigh gap which literally genetically is never going to happen Gabby and Kendall have seen me walk around and I literally have to walk around with my toes pointed out because my thighs rub and I don't like it. No, running just doesn't happen for you. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to see you run no. so bad. I still haven't. I, I think I have once and I thought you were kidding. No. Nope. <laughs> and you were like, no, this is how I run. And it's so sad because I used to be so fat. And now it's just like my thighs just don't handle but it. But see, so, that's okay. an example of like, you yeah. don't care about being fast because your legs look the way they do now. Oh, yeah. I'd rather have oh, thick thighs. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. It's yeah. just Kendall looks really beautiful, like a gazelle running. Oh God, thank and you. I look like a troll. Like <laughs> I feel like a troll, to be fair. <laughs> So, just yeah. a taller troll. Just a taller. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm the traditional troll who's like short and stubby and has My, little like, hobbit feet. Got a, that's what I call them. A little lift off. Um, I think we can go into step number two, which is educating yourself on the nutrition and training it would take to get to your why. Mm. So again, if you're, if your why is I want to be strong, maybe start educating yourself, watching videos, reading books, all of that on powerlifting. Or if you want to look like a bodybuilder, start watching and consuming more bodybuilder content and just go from there, find what you want and then educate yourself on how to get it. Yeah. I love that. And really, um, don't, Don't hesitate on investing in yourself during this time because where a lot of people get frustrated is there is so much information out there. And I did a lot of, actually most of it self-taught at the very beginning to a certain point. I got to a certain point and then I got stuck. So I did all of that. I researched, I studied, I figured out the nutrition aspect, the training aspect of how I wanted to do it. But then I got to a point where I felt like I was stuck and that's where I was like, okay, I need to invest in a coach who can Mm -hmm. take me to that next level. And that may or may not be something that you can do right now financially, but if you can highly recommend it because not only is this coach going to teach you something that you didn't know, but they can look at your body and your goals objectively Mm -hmm. and get you to get to that point. That's why I have a lot of competitors reach out to me and they say, should, you know, I'm coaching myself and I'm like, that's great. But also you have to get to a point in your bodybuilding prep where you have to deplete yourself. And are you willing to do that to yourself? Mm -hmm. A coach can be like, yeah, I'm going to do that to you because I don't really know you. Like, but that this is why, you know, Zach and I had like an issue at a certain point of our relationship where he was struggling with getting me to that level of depletion because yeah. he was so close to me. And he's like, I, I don't know if I could do that to you, mm-hmm. even though it's like the name of the game. So don't be afraid to invest in yourself in these moments when you can. Okay. But if you can't right now, like if you're a student or if you're just like on a really limited budget, research dedicate time to research like find people on youtube find people on instagram that are either with the goal that you have or in the what's it called like the category that you feel like you want to fit into Mm -hmm. not saying you have to have a category yeah also because that's something that i fixated on way too much um a lot of step number two comes with trial and error uh-huh. This is all going to come over time and you're going to learn things for yourself as far as diet, training, training styles like you. It's not there's no one step to success. Mm-hmm. It's all there's so many different avenues that you could go down and it's it just comes with experience and time. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that people don't like 
the most, especially with the society we live in. I like to call it, we're in the Amazon society where if we want something, we can literally get it like the next day. That's not how this is going to work. Like just plain and simple, Mm -hmm. your fitness goals, your mindset goals, they're not going to happen overnight. Like an Amazon package is going to arrive. Mm -hmm. You have to dedicate some time, some patience. And like Gabby was saying, you have to find what works for you. I used to follow like those tall skinny girls that can like, they can literally eat so much food and they have a really Mm -hmm. fast metabolism. Good for you. I'm super jelly, but that's not me. Mm -hmm. I have to really be careful of how much food that I eat. Granted, on my plus side, I build muscle like a mofo. Yeah. And yeah. that's my genetic gift. Do they yeah. have a fast metabolism? I don't. You know, give and take. But yeah. you can't just follow someone's like full day of eating and expect to look like them. Oh. You could follow it for a full year and you're not going to get the same results because that's their full day of eating for their physique. Exactly. And for things that they like and their calorie intake mm-hmm. and just like their lifestyle. Like for me, I eat six meals a day. That's not realistic for people. Yeah. And that's just because I'm a bodybuilder and like I need and I'm hungry that often throughout the day. My mom, for the other hand, she's lucky if she gets three meals in. She just mm-hmm. like can't think about eating that six much food. Meals. When I tell people that, they're yeah. like, you eat six times. I mean, I'm like, okay, well, there's like three main meals. But yeah. like yeah. when but you tell we do eat a just lot. regular gym goers that, they're like, what the, what the heck? And it's not How saying you that you that? have to do that. And no. I also think yeah. like full day of eatings are still great to watch because it gives you one motivation to see like someone else, how disciplined they are, but yeah. also like just inspiration as far as like what meals you could eat or yeah. implement into your own routine. Yeah. I don't think they're yeah. bad. By I any think means. that's a really good point because there's a lot of, I don't know if the word's conspiracy around like what I eat in a day is because I was that girl that would watch someone's what I eat in a day. And I was like, if I eat all of that, I will equal your body. Mm -hmm. And no, like I'm actually filming a what I eat in a day today. And like the main purpose of it is for inspiration. I'm like telling people that I'm like, this is for inspiration. This is for my body, my goals, Mm -hmm. my height, my weight, my exact genetic makeup, just use it for inspiration. So I think that's really important. And one thing that I wanted to add to this before we move on to number three was you don't have to, my toilet's making noise. <laughs> Shut up, toilet. It was I was just like, like, what <laughs> is that? That was vision. I did too. I, did too. I was like, like oh great, he out? broke something. He yeah. broke something. Vision's downstairs in his cage. Aww. Being a little sad buddy. But anyways, yes. So you don't feel like you have to categorize your, categorize yourself within a diet. When I started, I did vegan. I did pescatarian. I did vegetarian. I did keto. I did all of these things thinking that, okay, now that I'm a health and fitness person, I need to put myself in a category in order to succeed. I have to be like, okay, I'm a vegan bodybuilder. I am a vegetarian power lifter, which that would be really hard. That would be. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sure they're out there. Yeah, there's definitely, there's vegan bodybuilders for sure, but you mm-hmm. don't have to categorize yourself. I ended up just realizing like, I may eat everything type of person mm-hmm. in like moderation. And that ended up being the easiest thing for me because it didn't put any restrictions. It didn't put any limits on me of what I can and cannot have. And as someone who struggled with binge eating in the past, that's something that I need. I need that flexibility mm-hmm. or else I freak out. Definitely yeah. try all those things though. I think mm-hmm. like find what works for your body. I feel like mm-hmm. I was the same way. I did all that stuff. And like, I just found how my body reacted to that, those kinds of diets. And I, exactly the things that worked for me, I took mm-hmm. and I was continuing to do those, those diet tricks or whatever. I was that's doing. actually, I a, that's actually a really good point. Cause I love that. I did try all of those things because I realized why I could not do keto Yeah, for mm-hmm. one. It made me sick. And look, I tried these things for a significant amount of time to really give them a chance yes. to mm-hmm. see if it was something for me. Vegan and vegetarian did not work well with my digestive system. Mm-hmm. I tried all of these Same. things and it's just like, ooh, it didn't work Veggies for me. Veggies hate me. See, keto was amazing for me because it, cl- it cleared up my skin, like n- uh, very minimum sugar in my diet. Like Interesting. And mm-hmm. I love that I tried that and I couldn't do it for like ever, but yeah. Yeah. You're like, I could, if I want to go on a cut, I can do keto and it might work for me. (laughs) These things also have to do a lot with like your genetics and what your, um, what's the word your race is like weirdly enough. Like for example, I'm Hispanic. I'm an Italian, Russian and Filipino. She's Filipino. Not me. Literally <laughs> going back, like dating back to when, you know, our ancestors were borns. It has a lot to do with how we can 
eat things. Oh, absolutely. That's crazy. Like rice, I'm like how we process each thing. It has a lot to do with like our ethnicity and it's kind of mm, wild. That's awesome. Um, especially like Filipinos. Like, oh, I can I eat rice all day. Oh yeah. She can have like tons and it probably I, is no problem no, for her. No problem. <laughs> versus like me and Kendall. It's like, it's like, like I'll minimal be for a very long time. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So we got step number one was what do you want? Step number two, educate yourself on nutrition and training. And now we're moving into step number three is how do you want to move your body? And how many days can you commit to training? This is super important because you don't want to throw the kitchen sink at yourself and then Mm -hmm. psych yourself out and then quit, Mm -hmm. which is what I did. (laughs) Well, that's what I said when we were talking about like writing out these different steps is you don't want to commit to five times a week and then beat yourself up over not doing it. Mm -hmm. Start if you like be very realistic with yourself. If you can only get in the gym one to two times when you're starting out, that's one to two times you weren't doing before. It's still going to give you progress, still going to build consistency. And then as you have more time, commit more time. Oh, so yeah. baby steps are still steps. That's like a huge reminder. Oh yeah. One thing that I say a lot to my girls in my binge eating support group, I'm like 1% better each day. Like yeah, 1% better that. each day is very small, but if you add 1% better each day through the year, that adds up to a lot of progress mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's small, it's manageable. It's like, Oh, if like, if I, today, if I wanted to be 1% better, I would literally go on a five minute walk because mm-hmm. that's something that I didn't do yesterday. Like yeah. that's small, but it's a little bit more calorie burn. And just like you were saying, even if you go from working out no days to working out and training three days Mm -hmm. the amount of calories that you are burning in those three days that you weren't previously is going to actually give you results oh for sure but people will throw the kitchen sink at themselves Mm -hmm. and they will train six days a week i'm gonna wake up at 5 a.m i'm gonna be a badass (laughs) and then get upset with themselves when they're not perfect or they burn out and they burn out don't overwhelm yourself in the beginning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. something is always better than nothing exactly be nice to yourself Mm -hmm. be nice to yourself That's the key in this podcast. Yes. And this really can be just based off of like your job, your training style. Um, Like if you're a mom and you have kids, if you have a family, if you have a nine to five, like all of these things factor into when you're deciding what you want to do to move your body and how many days you can train. Like me, Kendall and Gabby all work from home. Mm -hmm. So our jobs are completely different. They're a little bit more flexible. Maybe our gym schedule can be more flexible. Like today, maybe I'll go work out at one instead of working out at four 30, but your situation might not be that. So maybe you need to be a little bit more disciplined and routine and figure out how to fit it in. Maybe fitting in cardio somehow before your kids wake up and then, There's a, you know, I, I'm not a mom. I know. So I, sacrifice <laughs> yeah, too. it does. And that's what I was just about to say that I know when I first had Natalie and I was trying to find the time to go to the gym, it was so overwhelming for me. And I was like, dude, I'm never going to be able to do this again. Like I'm pretty much going to have to be done with fitness because I'm a stay at home mom. Like I don't have anybody to watch my daughter. There's always, you're always going to have excuses or find excuses, but you have to look at the end goal and you have to think about yourself too. So even even if you're not a mother or a parent, you know, all these distractions, you really have to put yourself first and be like, okay, I need to make my health and my happiness a priority. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this. And I would look at a lot of mothers on social media and I was like, dude, they're doing it. Like I can do it too. I was like, I'm going to find a way, even if it was at 10 o'clock at night, when that was the only time that my mom wasn't at work, that she was able to watch my daughter. I was like, I'm going to do it. That's the time I have to do it. So I'm going to do it. Yeah. And it paid off. And look at you now. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It paid off. Yeah. And I'm I think happy I didn't give up or I'm, I'm happy that I didn't use that as an excuse because yeah. exactly. it, it happens. That's really cool because I can't really say what it feels like to be a mom because I'm not a mom, but I know that that's a hard thing. And there's a lot of like mom guilt that comes where it's like, if if you don't give like a hundred percent of everything to your child, then you feel guilty. And I know my mom would feel that way when she was younger. And then what happens is you start to focus less on yourself. And if you don't fill up your cup and your cup is half empty, when you're ready to give it to somebody else, you're, you're working on like a third of a cup to give. When if you would have just said, okay, you know what? I'm going to work out at 10 Mm -hmm. p.m. I'm going to fill my cup. I'm going to get my aggression out, de-stress, you know, really lift heavy. And then it's going to be filled up back again so that I can be everything that I can be for this child Mm -hmm. or for my partner or whoever it might be for my friends. So if you Mm -hmm. don't put yourself first, 
then you can't be there for other people. And if you have that mindset going into it, you're more likely to, I guess, um, make, make it work. Just, just mm-hmm. freaking make it work however you can. And if it's just, a 30, small even recession, if it's 30 minutes, yeah, literally. And you could do it at home. Like mm-hmm. if you really yeah. don't want to leave your child yet, I get that. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to like, I hate relating puppies to it's children because it's literally thing, <laughs> literally not the same but i didn't even want to leave him when i first got him yeah. i was like i don't even know if i can go to the gym like yeah. oh my god but you can do it at home mm-hmm. definitely i'm certified in um in pre and postnatal training and i have some clients who i'll train them through their pregnancy they'll obviously take the time off that they need once having the baby and then when we start again i try to integrate the baby into the workout i love like, that they'll hold them while they squat and it's literally my favorite that. thing ever they're so fun but like i know a lot of people can't afford having a trainer come to their house and train them with their child but Mm -hmm. um still i'm sure there's plenty of like youtube videos out there with like little at-home workouts to do with your kids that's Mm -hmm. really cool i had no idea you did that Mm -hmm. and i have so many people that reach out to me about that and i'm like i I don't do that (laughs) so i'm not going to like bring you on but Mm -hmm. i'm gonna send them to you that's so cool yeah i love my mom clients wow that's really cool okay that was number three how do you want to move your body how many days can you commit to the gym be realistic number four Now we're going into tracking progress. So like you've already set up your routine, how you want to train, you've educated yourself. So how do you keep it going by tracking progress? So Mm -hmm. how do you track progress, both of you guys, so that the people can know like how they can or Mm -hmm. what to look out for? Especially in prep photos. Photos are like my best friend because I think photos are number one yeah for me. yeah um i definitely don't do them enough in off season because i do beat myself up so i just know mm-hmm. myself so i know what to do in season and off season um but yeah photos are the best way in my opinion to track progress because you'll see your body change almost sooner than you'll see actual measurements change because a lot of the time you're just recompositioning your body so your weight might not change but your waist is getting smaller your legs are getting bigger so second thing that i do is measurements before i even weigh myself i rather track my like my waist my my arms, my quad. I think I also do my calves, even though they don't change that much. Um, <laughs> so yeah, photos and measurements are what I do. Weight comes sometimes. If if a weight goal is my thing, which it rarely is, I will tr- start weighing myself. If mm-hmm. not, I feel no need to ever step on a scale. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's one thing that I need to measurements is I need to re add into it because I'm so on top of it when I'm on prep. Mm-hmm. I do photos first. I do the measurements, and then I do the scale because my coach needs to know it. Mm -hmm. And those are my top three. And my, I guess, bonus one is doing body fat scans. So Mm -hmm. I do the DEXA scan and I'm actually on like a monthly membership if you're in the Austin area. I I think they have them everywhere. Yeah. In um I yeah, they literally have them all over the United States, but it's called body spec. And you literally can just go there and it's like $45 a month and you get one pass a month. And that's exactly what? how many start doing that. DEXA scans are expensive. I've too. never done one. Yeah. 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 So the membership you get one a month and it's so comprehensive and it's, it's the most comprehensive one that I've done. I've done the mm-hmm. in-body scans, but that's where you're literally like stepping on a scale. Yeah, they're not and it's, that's exactly. the one I do because it's free. <laughs> I, trust me, did it for a long time, but then I started realizing I'm like, okay, literally Inaccurate. these numbers don't make sense. Yeah. But once yeah. I did the DEXA scan, it actually boosted my confidence because I was like, oh my God, I've heard I put on two two pounds of muscle. Same. I was like, dang. I was, and then you can see, okay, my left leg's bigger than my right leg. <laughs> yeah, my I right leg's bigger than that. my left. And it's just, it's really, really cool. So that's one thing that I do if you can afford it, if you can budget mm-hmm. it in. Um, if you can't, the in-bodies are good for like a general idea. General I always idea. say they're accurate, not precise. So for my that's clients good. that use in-bodies, like if you see it on a decline, yes, your body fat is declining. The number itself is not usually yeah. accurate. Don't take the numbers too seriously yeah. in look general. At the look at the, look at the graph. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I love that. One thing for photos that i wanted to mention like kendall was saying is that it's they're so useful because for example like if you start if you start and you do your progress photo it might be very hard for you to take your progress photo Mm -hmm. because it might be very uncomfortable you might be a little bit uncomfortable in your skin but trust me i am so glad that i took that starting photo because now i look back and i'm like damn you did the Mm -hmm. thing girl so just just get past that and one thing that you'll notice is that once you start progressing and getting closer to your goals your confidence will perk up in mm-hmm. your photos mm-hmm. you'll start posing you'll be like bam because in my first photo i literally was looking sideways i was like 
Oh. I was looking oh. sideways and I was like, just take it. And now I'm like, mm, get yeah. it. Now you're smiling. Yeah, because I'm like, I did the thing. Yeah. And um, on the measurement aspect of it too, this one is a really good one, especially for like your, if you're wanting to grow your glutes or your quads, seeing that number go up on your glutes, it's mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's really cool. Especially like your quads. I'm like, the, for me, that's my favorite, obviously. I'm like, yeah. Because every day you don't see it. You really yeah. don't. No, like, no. you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not growing. Like, what's no. going on? When you look back at the numbers, you're like, oh my God, I actually am growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why these things, I literally have an album in my phone that's like my progress yeah, photos. Me too. And then I can just like, and it also helps going back and looking. Oh my God, this is what I looked like at the start of prep. Yes. And then I'm like, wow, okay. It, it really helps bring you back down in those moments where you're like, oh, I feel so unconfident. Mm-hmm. I feel beauty. Nothing's happening. Getting to have that. Oh, my lash is coming off. <laughs> <laughs> I have I my lash it. appointment oh, no. tomorrow and get back, get back. Yeah. It's just having them is going to be so beneficial in the future. Mm-hmm. So just, just get past that. Close your eyes if you need to set the timer and just take the picture because you will not regret it later. Same thing with the power lifters out there. Like write down your numbers, write yes. down your, your PRs and every week or whenever you max out that stuff. I remember I would put it in like this little like flip notebook thing. And it, I wish I still had it too. Cause that would be so cool to see how far I've come. Oh yeah. You'd be like, Ooh, I but, crushed that. <laughs> yeah. But that, like you can just each time you PR or whatever you want to mm-hmm. do max out, just write those numbers down. You won't regret it because you're going to see your progress that way. Oh, and yeah. that way you can set new goals. So you can write down, okay, this is what I need to be doing by this time or whatever you need to be I doing. I think that works for non-power lifters too. Even mm-hmm. just like the very normal gym goer or bodybuilders, whatever it is. Like I think tracking progress um, as far as like actually in the gym can be really motivational. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was such a nerd when I first started. Like when I... I did a bunch of research for myself and then I got to a point where I was stuck. And then that's when I started with my first bodybuilding coach Mm -hmm. and I literally had her workout plan printed out and glued in my notebook and I I would open my notebook and I was like really shy at the time. So like I would memorize what I did and then I would go into the, I would go into the, the locker room and I'd write it down. I wish I could meet old Julie. Oh yeah. She was a dork. I think for (laughs) us now we're so comfortable like training with training. We don't need to like be doing that stuff, but that helps a lot with beginners because Mm -hmm in between if they're nervous in the gym that could be like something to calm them down like yes. okay i'm gonna hit the set and then i'm gonna go i'm gonna go back to my notebook i'm gonna write down what i just did i'm gonna yeah. say how many reps how, how much the weight was like that could be something very easily to distract your mind from mm-hmm. the anxiety that comes with being in the gym yeah so if that's something that you need to do is like track your workouts yeah. and track your weight like definitely, definitely do it And that kind of brings us into tip number five and the last tip, which is how do you progress and how do you continue to grow? So we were just talking about tracking progress with your physical and then with strength goals. Mm -hmm. And if you are wanting to continue to grow, tracking on both of these aspects are going to be so important so that you know where you are and you know where you're going and you know if what you're doing is working or not, Mm -hmm. because then it can eliminate you feeling like, oh, I'm stuck and I feel like I'm not going anywhere. Then you can look back. Okay. What was I doing during this photo? What were my calories? Okay. Maybe my calorie, I wasn't really in a calorie deficit. Maybe I was actually eating a little bit more. That's Mm -hmm. why I wasn't losing weight or I could keep my calories the same a party of a little bit, get a little bit more of a calorie burn, then I'm in a deficit again. So tracking these things are super important so that you know, okay, am I actually getting closer to my goal or am I kind of stalling? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, with the, as far as like the weightlifting goes, progressive overload. I mean, mm-hmm. you hear this so much, but what does it actually mean? Progressive overload essentially means just consistently going heavier or harder Mm -hmm. with each lift so it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go from 10 pounds to 15 pounds in one week but to over time go from 10 to 15 or go from 10 doing 10 reps to 10 doing 20 reps just slowly progressing it that's Mm -hmm. all it really means is like overloading your body taking on a little more stress and then you're going to be able to handle that and perform better Push yourself. Yep. Yeah, progressive overload. And Progressively fail. overloading your muscles. Yeah. <laughs> but literally like, fail. Yeah, All literally. Days. And I think that I'll, I'll tell the story. I, I don't know if I told it on the podcast before, but I'll tell it in a second. But um, progressive overload can look weight wise. It can also look rep wise. Yes. So, for example, if I am, say I did five plates for my hip thrust and then the next week I'm still a little bit fatigued. 
and it's like, okay, I don't think I can do five plates and add a 10 pound because that's what I'll usually try mm-hmm. to do. I'm like, okay, last week I did five plates on each side. I'll add five plates and then I'll do a 10. And I'm like, ooh, I'm still a little bit fatigued. Then I'll go for a rep progressive yes. overload. Just so like one I'm more like, rep makes a difference. Literally, one yeah. like just or like we're saying, squeezing for two seconds longer is still progressing. Exactly, just like one percent better each day. Like even if you're doing that one more rep, it really matters. That's one more rep than you did last week, even if it's like the smallest amount. Even if you're going from twelve pounds to like the fifteen pounds mm-hmm. or ten to the twelve, those two pounds matter. And don't be afraid to pick them up. Those little 2.5s, add that to your bar. Nobody uses the little 2.5s, but that's still going to, that's a PR. You can PR by five pounds adding a 2.5 each side. Exactly, because if you add 2.5 one time, the next time you can add five or maybe Mm -hmm. even 10. But getting from maybe none to adding the 10, that's a bigger Mm -hmm. jump. But having that little baby jump in between can actually get you Mm -hmm. to that goal a lot quicker. There was... um, this little, this girl, she was about 4'11 at um, Gold's Gym, and she was doing 35s for uh, dumbbell press, which is really good for how small and how light she was. She mm-hmm. literally weighed, I ended up asking her, she weighed like 100 pounds. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I went up to her and I was like, you're strong. You're really strong. I was like, I bet you can do 55s. I was like, you just did 35s for like 12. Mm-hmm. I was like, I bet you can do 45s or 55s for at least six. She's like, oh, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, why are you scared? What the? And then I thought back, I was like, I know exactly how she feels. I was so scared because I was embarrassed that if I put those 45s up, if I only got one rep and someone saw me only get one rep. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, shit, I'll do a half rep. And I'm like, "Mm, okay, then I can go down five pounds and I know that I can actually get it up. But it can be really intimidating at first because you get embarrassed of what other people are thinking. But Literally, I was like, if you want to go for those 45s, I will spot you because mm-hmm. I know that you can di- I know that you can get it. And then she ended up doing them and she didn't ask for my spot. And I spotted her anyways because she was like starting to fail. Mm-hmm. And I came up behind her and I was like, I pushed her to do more. And there's so many, doesn't matter, guy, girl, in the gym, guys do this too. They are not pushing as hard as they can. Mm-hmm. I even worked out with Zach and Nick and they were definitely not pushing as hard as they could. They're mm-hmm. a lot stronger than they thought and they were just kind of going through the motions. I was like, do you guys not want to get big? Yeah. yeah. I was like, add some weight. Do more reps. Sometimes it's like, hard when you're used to lifting alone because I'm I'm still afraid to ask certain people for a spot. Same. Um, but also just like not realizing your potential and like not thinking that you can lift as heavy as you actually can. I feel like I always get in my own head and most people do too where you're like, oh, I've, I've done the 10s a million times I'm just gonna stay with the 10s and it's like no go to those 15s try the 20s like even if that means you get one rep that's okay yeah but at least it gives you a little tester of like wow I actually know my strength and the biggest thing that I got from what you said is like you're more powerful than you think that's the whole theme of this podcast yeah you are stronger than you think mentally physically emotionally you just have to actually believe that you have that inside of you Mm -hmm. all of you have that inside of you everyone how are you going to bring it out is it going to be in the gym is it going to be in your personal life? Mm-hmm. It better be both. Both. <laughs> it better be both. I think also going um, with the how to continue progress. So with that step number five is your goals might change. So you kind of start back at step number one. What's your new why? Maybe mm. you're stronger or look different than you thought you were going to end up looking. Okay, let's reevaluate. Is this a projection you want to continue on? Do you want to change something in your routine to change how you're gonna look like you're not you're not stuck if i'm like hey i want to be this weight this size and i start training for that and i already surpass it like i'll just set a new weight new size like Mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of people put themselves in these bubbles where they're like well i set out to look a certain way so i can't change anything until i look that way it's like no your body's gonna change your your eating habits are gonna change find your new why find your new goal and continue training a different way if you need to don't be too hard on yourself too because like you said like some people just train for so long Mm -hmm. and they feel like they need to be in this bubble or they feel like they need to look a certain way or Mm -hmm. because that's how they've been training for so many years but that's why I do powerlifting and that's why I do my compounds is because that stuff is what keeps it fun for me Mm -hmm. like you have to find the things or try something different to like make it fun and that's where you're gonna stay in the gym that's how you're going to keep yourself yes. in the gym that's what i've just done to this have year. fun yeah just have fun and enjoy it enjoy the process enjoy the journey like and nothing if, if you're like in a space where like you're kind of like in off season and you don't mm-hmm. really like have any 
plans to compete or anything like that, just have fun and move your body yeah, as long find, as you're find moving your ways body. Of training. Definitely. Yes, yeah. When I am in my improvement season, there's things that I do that I don't really do in my competition prep because not only do I not have the time because I'm spending so much time focusing on that, but I do things that are a little bit more fun. Like maybe I'll go hiking, I'll do yeah. more yoga, like I will do hit style cardio yeah. instead of steady state, like things just to like keep it interesting. Yes. yes. That's what I've been doing recently, which I know we're going to talk a little bit about like how each of us train and how that's changed. So I'll I'll save it (laughs) just to kind of go over them before we get into our personal stories. Step number one on how to get started in the gym, figure out what you want. What is your why? What's your intention of starting? Number two, educate yourself on the nutrition and training. And if you can't and you're just like, I ain't going to do that. Hire somebody if you are able to invest in yourself. Number three, how do you want to move your body? How many times can you realistically go to the gym with your lifestyle, your family, and your time? Number four, track progress. This is physical. This is also strength. And number five, how do you progress and continue to grow? How can you keep up this momentum? And that's actually something that we're going to go into talking. Like, how do you keep all of this up? Um, But Kendall, Mm. how did this work for you when you started how what did this all look like like what did these steps look like for you like in a short um i think originally when i looked at what i wanted i think it was more a bikini competitor that that was my goal i knew i wanted to compete um and all the the women i had followed at the time competed in bikini so a very like slim look most of the girls i followed were like tall and slim and they had good muscle but like I'll get into that. Eventually I outgrew them with muscle, which is why I was like, okay, bikini's not for me. Um, But when it came to educating myself, I would talk to the people around me and watch so many YouTube videos. I would like study. Yeah, it was like a playbook where I was like, what does every bikini competitor do? And like, I would start replicating or start like taking bits and pieces that I liked from each of their routines or meals or whatever it was and implementing that. And then when it came to training, like I... It, the gym instantly became my happy place. So I was there every single day. I was probably over training. I was probably going seven times a week. I go like five times a week now um, just to sh- show the change of like over time. Um, but yeah, I, I would go every single day. I would watch their videos re- religiously and just wanted to be a bikini competitor so bad. Mm-hmm. And then when it came to tracking progress and like continuing progress and momentum, I realized very quickly that I gained muscle far faster than a lot of these bikini competitors do, Mm -hmm. which is why I was like, okay, let's reassess. I no longer want to look like a bikini competitor seeing that I don't look like them. So um, it took me a while until wellness was announced to find a category I felt like I fit in, Mm -hmm. but I did start following like, more muscular woman and seeing what they do and started training upper body more and like just went for an overall bigger look. And then when wellness was announced, I was like, finally, I like fit in a category Mm -hmm. and it felt so good. And then I found this all new wave of these wellness competitors and I was like, this is it. So that became my new goal. I started seeing what they were doing. I started implementing that. And then eventually, yes, I did get coaches when I could afford it since I started so young. Like I definitely couldn't. Mm -hmm. And like my mom would definitely support me when she could but I felt bad being like hey I know this is like a hobby like you don't have to invest in it until I'm like fully ready so eventually I did get a coach and that was definitely life-changing because I'm the opposite you had mentioned coaching earlier for we can't be so hard on ourselves and deplete ourselves so much I'm the opposite I'm too hard on myself I will deplete myself far sooner than I need to and be on like such low calories that I need a coach to be like you're doing okay you're Mm. on track you can eat like that's why I need a coach. So that, that that definitely helped me, and now I'm here today. <laughs> so. And look at look at me now. And what does your split look like today? Today, um, well, in the beginning, it was actually very push pull legs. That was, I think, the split most people start with, which I think is great for beginners. Um, that's what I recommend for most people who don't know where to start anyway. I would do push pull legs, push pull legs, maybe a rest, mm-hmm. again, over training. And then when wellness was announced and I realized that's the physique I was going for, I started hitting legs three times a week. Mm-hmm. So it would be a quad focused, a hamstring focus, and then a full leg day, and then like shoulders in between those, mm-hmm. um, and taking two rest days a week. That's kind of what I do now. I'm doing a little less when it comes to legs just because I'm not competing this year. I don't want to 
puts so much stress on my body, especially like I have really bad hip flexors and back. So I'm giving myself some time to like recover this year. Um, so I'm doing kind of like two to three leg days a week, but much lighter than I was when I was really gun ho on doing wellness and then still just shoulders and upper body as my upper body workouts. Ours are very yeah. similar. Yeah. Now, Gabby, um, tell us a little bit about I your feel like journey. I like I on the longest tangent. No, you, I was I like, hey, give us a journey. journey. It's yeah, a journey, a though. It's yeah, a it journey. Is. And it then is. when you've been training as long as all of us have, like, yeah. yeah we, that was just a loop up of, like, eight years of my training yes. in, like, one statement. Uh-huh. So I tried. So, like, when I was in California and I first started, like, lifting, lifting, besides, like, what we were doing for sports training, mm. um, I was kind of just consuming everything that everybody was teaching me around me. I was already very motivated because I loved being in the gym. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. Like, I love being here. You don't have to tell me to go because I mm-hmm. want to be here. Um, so I was just kind of soaking in what all the other trainers and all the other athletes around me were telling me. I was seeing their tips and tricks on like what and how my body reacted to those things. And I was doing that for like two or three years. I was talking to competitors. I was talking to powerlifters. I was talking to um, crossfitters, like all these different training styles. I was doing all of it because I enjoyed it. And then after I had my daughter, and at that point, I just wanted to get big. I was like, oh my God, I just want to gain muscle. But, and then I had my daughter and then my the toilet again. Hi, toilet. <laughs> We're going to call him Timmy the toilet. Timmy the toilet. Timmy. He's Timmy. making an I'm announcement. What Timmy? up, Timmy? Don't interrupt. Um, after I had my daughter, my goals completely changed because at that point I was just focused on losing weight. So I was mm. like, okay, this is very different. This is, I'm very out of my element. Like, I don't really, I've never really had to lose weight. I, I don't really know what I'm doing. So that's when I focused a lot more on diet and cardio because I never really did cardio before. And, um, that's when I was like really diving deep into bodybuilding too, or like that style of training, because I was like, okay, well I'm pretty much at step one right now. And I want to go back to being in a body and being in a physique that I absolutely love. So that's when I was like, okay, bodybuilding, like you literally can make your body look however you want. Mm -hmm. So I was doing a lot more of that style of training. Um, for the longest time, literally, I would say for about six years my split was chest tries back buys shoulders legs and mm-hmm. then rest what is it now um i'll go into that when i'm done with this but because <laughs> that's like, okay. it's, it's difficult um but that was my split for the longest time and my physique was resulting in that because my upper body was mm-hmm. a lot larger than my legs so after i lost the weight from pregnancy and i was in a good spot i was like okay let me let me look at myself right now and ask myself if I'm like happy or if I'm confident. And I was like, you know what? I was, I've been training for guys for six years and I want to grow my legs. That mm-hmm. was like a year and a half ago. So now my split is, I split up my leg days. So I do three different leg days. Um, I do quad glute. And then the next day I do back buys. My next day, leg day is ham glute. And then I do shoulders and tries. I do not do. I do not train chest anymore yeah. because my chest is just too much for me to handle. She's got a nice chest. And okay. then, um, and then I have a glute day. And I do not set a rest day. So I just rest on the days I feel like I am not fully recovered. I love that. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. Very mm-hmm. good. And that's it's a super important because once you get started, you kind of get that momentum and you get a little bit obsessed and you're like, mm-hmm. I have to rest on this day. No, I have no, to train yeah. on this day. If you're not like a competitor and you like don't have to do things then really just go off of how your body is yeah, feeling intuition. and kind of adjust. Yeah. yeah. You get, you'll definitely know it. Um, for me, I mean, I started as a wrestler from 15 to 18. So I was weightlifting, wrestling and doing cross country so that I can be strong, but also very quick and have a lot of cardiovascular health (laughs) because when you're going matches and you're wrestling someone it's it's a lot it's a it's a lot so I've been lifting I lifted a lot then but I was I was the only girl so I was lifting with a bunch of guys and literally I've always that's just how I've been I've been surrounded by guys a little bit more than girls ironically now so I've been lifting for a while but I didn't really know what I was doing then I was just Mm -hmm. listening to what they were doing and I know that I enjoyed it but I didn't have any purpose behind it other than like this is you know, for wrestling, but I don't know what any of the names of these are. And then I just completely quit. I was burnt out 
with the dieting for wrestling and everything. So for about, I think it was about 18 till about 20 or 21, I literally didn't do anything. I didn't train. I didn't work out, nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I just lost myself because I'm an athlete. And I looked at myself in the mirror and was like, bro, who have you become? And it wasn't necessarily the body that was upsetting. It was that I knew I was an athlete. I knew I was disciplined, motivated, had dreams, had goals and aspirations. And I had just given up on life. And um, then I got back into Pilates and like Kendall was saying, things change. You know, I wanted to be super slim and just like really, really, really tiny. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting that way by doing Pilates and like having a very, very strict diet and lots of cardio. And then I saw a muscular girl and was like, that's what I want. And she was a bikini competitor. So my goals shifted again. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to be a compete good bikini competitor. And then I already, I build muscle very fast. I built up the bikini physique already. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. Okay, that, that like, no, I, I was like, I don't, I was like, I'm too small. I felt, I felt too small. Yeah. This is just me personally. Then the wellness division came out, and I was like, that's where I need to be. I've been called thunder thighs since I was born, mm-hmm. literally birth. <laughs> I was the heaviest baby in our family, Yo, and I, I looked huge. I looked like the Michelin Man. That's what my mom Aww. said. I was, I just had big legs naturally. I people even said I had big legs when I was in wrestling, and I look back on it now, and I'm like, those were sticks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so again, shifted into the wellness category. And since I heard it coming out and I even heard it coming out earlier because my um, fiance at the time was really into the bodybuilding scene. So he knew when it was coming out a little bit earlier. So I was like, that's it. Started training for the wellness category and it just suited my body, my physique, Mm -hmm. my body ate it up. And that's still where I am to this day. You know, the goal is to be on the Olympia stage next year. So this year is focused on improving. So my split now is a typical wellness split. So legs every day, legs all the time. <laughs> and now I love it. I, I absolutely love it. I used to hate training legs, and now it's just like same. You kind of just it's almost like used to our it. brain tricks us because once you start doing it more, it's like, hey, you should enjoy this. Yeah. Like you, you almost trick yourself into enjoying it. And now I look forward to my leg yes. days more than anything. I agree. I totally agree. It's like you, you typically only like the things that you're good at. Mm -hmm. and that you're progressing in so Mm -hmm. like i hate training calves that's why my calves are small i would love training calves if i had nice calves like it's just you can get to that point like i hated training legs because i didn't feel like they were big enough now i love training them because they swell up and they look giant Mm -hmm. so now my split sunday is typically a rest day monday is um quad focused with still a little bit of gluten hamstring but Mm -hmm. mainly quads Tuesdays is shoulders and a little bit of triceps. And when I mean a little, I mean literally just touching them and making sure they're still activated. Uh, Wednesday is a rest day if I need it to be. Um, Thursday, gluten ham. Friday is full body. And that's where I literally just touch my back, touch my biceps Mm -hmm. a little bit, maybe touch my shoulders again. That's typically what I do just Mm -hmm. to make sure that they're still there. But I don't want to, I don't progressive overload on those days. I literally am just... Getting doing, a pump. just getting a pump, yeah. like making sure it's still there. What was that? Friday, Saturday, glutes and hams again. And I do calves every morning after my cardio sessions. And I do cardio sessions five times a week for about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on just like how much energy I have, mm-hmm. you know, just going off of intuition. And then I already said Sunday was resting. So that's what yeah. I'm doing right now. Sick. That's we all have pretty similar splits now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we all started very drastically different. What was your split in the beginning? It was like pitch, pitch pull. Fishbowl. What? Fish pull. <laughs> Push pull legs. It, it, yeah. was, it was that because yeah. it's a really good place to start because yeah. if you're starting from square one and you want to build a balanced physique, that's a perfect way to start. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, look at your weak points. If you're lacking shoulders, make that push day more shoulder oriented. Exactly. Make that make that pull day more rear delt oriented and then you can go from there. I always wanted huge shoulders. So that's why I pulled my shoulder day. day. That's why I pulled my shoulder day out of my push day. Mm -hmm. So I could do it so so I could just focus literally on on shoulders. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing once I was like I just like I saw girls with the cat I was like I want cap shoulders. That's and I just was like okay I'm gonna train them twice a week. And I'm telling you once I started doing that they started growing and I was like yes. So now anytime that I want to like really focus on an area, it's hard to focus on areas all at the same time. Mm -hmm. If I there's an area that I really need to focus on. Like right now I'm doing that with glutes. I'm like, okay, I can't put a hundred percent of my effort towards three things at one time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going ham on glutes. That's ironic. Yeah. Ham Ham on glutes. That's why I split up my leg days is because I found that, okay, I only had one leg day in my split. 
I'm not getting enough time specifically with my quads Mm -hmm. or specifically with my hamstrings. So that's why I pulled them out. And then obviously my glutes are like my weakest point. So that's why I threw glutes in and I'm not like killing my glutes every leg day. It's just like, I'm like touching them. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm making sure they're activated. And then at night when I get done with training, like I'm fueling them, I'm eating my protein. So like you, and that is very body specific. Like you have to like, be like, okay, this is what I need to do. It, that's why when people say their their workout splits, what was working for us, because you could see it, all of our splits are very different. Mm-hmm. What is working for us may not work for you. You mm-hmm. have to be like very specific. Huge, with yourself. big facts. Because like, even if like you, you aspire to have a wellness physique, like us three are pretty much like wellness physiques, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, and you're just starting out. If you do the training split like we're doing, you're going to be the wrong kind of imbalance Mm -hmm. wellness physique is the only physique in bodybuilding where they look for an imbalance where Mm -hmm. they want your upper body to be more muscular than bikini but they want your lower body to dominate but if you're first starting and you're you need to build that upper body still foundation you still need the foundation of having a strong back having a strong chest and having the muscle so once i had built that then i was like okay i need to kind of chill on that i have that now i need to really just tailor it towards the wellness physique so like perfect point that Gabby is saying. And I feel like that is a perfect place to kind of stop. That was a really good episode, guys. <laughs> I say that every one. time. I that said, felt good. It was really good. It felt good. So it guys, subject. thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. We love you. And as always, you are more powerful than you think. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Know Your Power Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. And if you believe we deserve it, make sure to leave a review and rate the show. Love you. Bye.